Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 3rd of December 2011. Over the last week we've had lots of coronal mass ejections, some quite spectacular, yet very few flares. But before we get into all of that, our trivia question today is in the form of a riddle. To some a god and mighty king, his symbol was an eagle's wing. His wife was found in 1904, but he really loved wine and war. 69 years on, a pioneer his photo took. It gave us our first closer look. The answer to the riddle will be given at the end. As I said in the introduction, we've experienced very few flares. And most of those were minor C flares, with no M and X class flares. We have only had 28 flares in the last week. This is down from 38 in the previous week, and 50 the week before that. As you can see from this plot of the daily flare totals. The question is, will this trend continue? Of course we don't know. But it seems likely for at least the next week, unless we get some dramatic growth in some new regions, especially in the south. So let's take a look at the evolution of the sunspots over the last week using the 4700 Angstrom channel from the Solar Dynamics Observatory Atmospheric Imaging Assembly instrument. Watch the regions that come over the southeast limb, as one of them, region 1363, shows significant and steady growth. More on that later. Otherwise the sunspots seem quite passive, but if you look at the same 7 day period in the cool corona, the Iron 9 line at 171 angstroms, which represents a temperature of about 650,000 degrees, it looks anything but passive. Look at all the interactions between the regions, but it is difficult to see flares at this wavelength. For that we turn to the Iron 20 line at 131 angstroms, which represents about 10 million degrees Kelvin. Here every bright flash is a flare. Big flares will saturate this channel, but I don't see that happening at any of the times during this week. So there have been no big flares. But you can't say that for coronal mass ejection. Here is a week of coronagraph data from the Soho Lasco instrument. And you can see that we have had a string of impressive coronal mass ejections. Oh by the way, the object crossing from left to right is Mercury. Has the Earth been affected by any of these coronal mass ejections? Well, we had one period of unsettled conditions late on the 28th, and overall the KP index, a measure of how disturbed the Earth's magnetic field is, was higher than it was the previous week. But we had no high-level geomagnetic storm conditions. Now let's see what's happening on the Sun in the last 24 hours. First the sunspots. We have six officially numbered regions on the disk, and at least one coming over the east limb at the moment. Most regions have been stable or decaying, hence the relatively quiet flaring conditions. But as we shall see, a couple of the regions are now growing. Let's start in the northwest by looking at regions 1358 and 1361. In the last few days, the areas of these regions has declined. But as usual, I take those numbers with a pinch of salt. The area seems to peak at sun center and go lower near the limbs. This may be the case, but is more likely a function of foreshortening as they get near to the limbs. I also note, according to the official figures, that region 1358 is larger than region 1361, but that does not seem to be the case. However, neither of these regions has produced any flares in the last couple of days, and they will soon be disappearing over the west limb, and play no further part in influencing our space weather for the coming week. Next is region 1362, which is currently near Sun Center. It is a relatively large and complex group that has been steadily growing over the last few days and produced at least one sea flare. It is worth keeping an eye on this region to see how it develops over the next few days. Active region 1363 in the southeast has been growing quite rapidly. It has produced two sea flares and it is now the largest region on the disk. It almost looks like two regions, doesn't it? Again, an area to keep an eye on over the next few days. You may recall me talking about large isolated spots and how they are generally stable and so inactive. Well, this region has produced a sea flare recently. Why? Well, if you look at closely, you see that it's surrounded by a myriad of small disorganized satellite spots. This seems to be odd to me. Usually we have well-defined leading spot with some trailing satellite spots. This one seems to have its satellite spots spread all around. In the north, we have our last numbered region, region 1365. It too is odd in that it has a well-defined trailer spot, but scattered leading spots. Well, this just goes to show that if you make up a rule of thumb of for solar activity, that the first thing the sun does is to hit your thumb with a hammer. We have an as yet unnumbered region in the northeast. We'll have to wait for a day or two to see its extent. 
In the south there may be some development near the east limb, but again we will have to be patient to see what transpires there. In the last 24 hours the lack of big flares continued. There is a possible long duration flare on the second and another on the third, both from the west limb. I've put together a movie of the first one of these, the one that occurred on the second, from the SDO data. It's quite spectacular, isn't it? The one on the third is even more so, but there is no data available for it at this time, so I captured a screenshot of it from the SDO beacon data. It looks like quite a massive explosion. Here are the corresponding chronal mass ejections. All of this activity has led to solar wind parameters fluctuating all over the place. As you can see here, the main contributor to the moderately high solar wind velocity, shown here in yellow, is the southern polar coronal hole, which has a large extension north at the moment. Coronal holes are where the solar wind originate from. The net result on the Earth's magnetosphere is that conditions have remained generally quiet but enhanced compared with the last week or two. So in summary then, the GOES X-ray flux is at B7 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 106, radio sun intensity is quite high at 157 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is moderate at 460 km per second, the auroral zone is quiet and the KP index currently is at 3, which is also rated as quiet. If we look at the composite coronal image, we can see what will happen to us in the next week. To the left of the red dotted line is what regions will be rotating onto the visible surface of the Sun over the next week. There does not seem to be much in the Northern Hemisphere and two modest regions in the South. The first is about two to three days out and the second four to five days out from now. The answer to the riddle is the planet Jupiter. Jupiter was the king of the Roman gods, the god of parties and war, and his symbol was an eagle. Jupiter is also the king of the planets. His wife was the nymph Himalia which was the name given to Jupiter's fifth largest moon, uh, which was discovered on this date in 1904. 69 years later to the day, Pioneer 10 took the first close-up pictures of the planet Jupiter. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the Sun, please follow some of the links in the description box below. If you like this, and would like to see earlier editions of the Sun today, please go to my channel, they are listed there, along with some of my videos on global warming. If you want to keep abreast of what's going on in the Sun, you're more than welcome to subscribe. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.